Hello, how are you? Welcome back. In this video, we're going to cover how to do multiple strokes and multiple fills in Affinity Designer 1.7, and it's all hidden in their new appearance panel. So let me show you how it's done. Let's jump right in and get started. Now, on the right-hand side, you'll see that I have all the colors uh, set up here, and these are the hex values here. And uh, if you don't know how to enter a color by a hex value, you would go to your color panel here on the right-hand side, click these menu bars here, and you want to select sliders and then you get this drop down here and you would select the hex here okay so it allows you to enter it here all right so what we're going to do is we're going to create an object actually i'm going to use text for the example so let's just go ahead and set that up let's do our text on a curve for fun so we'll go up to our pen tool we'll uh click once to make a starting point, hold down the shift key and click again for your end point. We'll go now to the node tool. You can select A on your keyboard or just select it off the tools, uh, tools panel. Now we'll just kind of go towards the middle here and we're just going to click and push that up and create an arch. Okay, and we'll go back to our selector tool. We're going to bring this down a little bit. Now we want to put our text on this curve, so go and select your text tool. And we want the uh, artistic text tool, this first one. Now you notice when we get it over here, go ahead and select our arch there. You notice when you get it by the arch that the icon changes from an A. See that A there? And then you get it right there and it gets you get that T with the little curly Q underneath. That means text on a curve. Go ahead and click that. This green arrow now means that's your starting point and you can click and move that along your path there to create your starting point. And you can change it later, so no problem there. Okay, so we'll just kind of center that on our curve like that. This red arrow down here is your stopping point. That's the point at which your text would go around this arch and continue under here if you had more letters. Okay, so go ahead and click our selector tool to get out of that. So we have our text and we want to create these multiple strokes like we have on this object. We're going to create these multiple strokes. So uh, the first thing we have to do is um, you want to make sure you can see your appearance panel. That is up here or should be up here in your <clears throat> that is up here in your colors panel group. That's what I call it. I don't know what they officially call it. It's right here. If yours is not showing, then you need to go up to View and Studio and then make sure that this has a check mark. Okay, and that way that panel is showing up for you. We'll go ahead and escape out of that. Now, so we have our text, but we notice on our appearance panel here, you don't have, these are, are not available options yet, your Add Stroke and Add Fill. To do that, we need to create, we need to have these, instead of being text, they need to be vector objects. So let's go down here to our text tool again, and you get that little eye icon, and we're going to select our text. We want to turn it into a uh, vector object, so you can either, uh, we'll go to layer here in your top uh, menu bar, and we're going to convert it to curves, okay? You can either uh, click it here or you can do the key sh keyboard shortcut which is a command and enter or control and enter if you're on a PC. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now if you look in your layers panel it automatically makes a group and each one of these letters is now a vector object, a curve. So we'll just select the P. We'll build the P and then I'll show you how you can apply what you've done on one element to all of the other objects. Okay. So we have in our appearance panel, we have our fill. We want to create our first stroke. So we're just going to click the little um, icon for the stroke there and we'll get our color panel. Now I'm just going to use the eyedropper tool today to make it easy. Once you have the color in this little dot, you just click it to apply it. Now the thing we want to do, if you notice in this now, you have normal, This, if you click that, this is your blend modes, so you can uh, apply a blend mode to any of the strokes. This gets you to your stroke panel, and if you click here, you get your color panel. Okay? So we want to make sure that this first stroke is on the inside. 
we did the first stroke to the inside and every other stroke to the outside. So we want the yellow stroke. We have it selected. We have the yellow stroke selected. I'm going to go to that panel. We want this one to be on the inside. Okay. So we have that on the inside. Now we can select uh, to add additional strokes. So we'll do that. We're going to select uh, the color first. We'll just click on that and we want to select this pink color and we'll apply it. And we're going to put it at, let's just do a little bit bigger, um, like that. Seven and a half looks good. So you have your inside and your outside. We'll make sure that we have that to the outside. Oh, you need to click here where the number is. We want this one to be the outside. Okay, so you see how it's stacking up here? All right, so let's add additional stroke. But we want the additional stroke to be under the pink because we're going to stack them now. It'll be pink. Then the two blues and the green will go under each other. So we're going to highlight the yellow and then add a stroke and it'll put it right above. So it'll automatically put it below the pink where we want it. So let's add our color first and we're just going to do the light blue. We'll go to the stroke panel. We're going to put it at about a 14. Thirteen is close enough. We want it to the outside. Okay, I'm going to go down and select the yellow again. Add another stroke. We'll select our size, and that'll be a size twenty-three for this layer. Okay, so twenty-three for this layer. Then we're going to apply our color, and we're just going to select the dark blue this time and hit the button to apply it. Oh, looks like we forgot to put it to the outside again. We keep doing that. We're going to align that to the outside. So you see how they're stacking up here? Isn't that nice? Automatically does it in the right order. So as long as you select this one first, it'll put them in the order that they're stacked. So we'll add one more. We have the green one. We're going to go ahead and do a 33 roundabouts for that one. To the outside remember we'll do it to the outside this time we're going to select our color panel we're going to select that bright green color and apply it and we have it to the outside okay so since we have our object selected now I'll show you how you can apply what you have on this object to all of the other objects so you have your object selected we'll go to the styles panel which is here in your layers panel group and we're going to go to this little menu bars right here. Go ahead and click that and we're going to add style from selection. Okay. Now if you right click on it, you can rename it or delete it. So we have this here. So let's go back to our layers panel. We can select all of these other layers. So you uh, select one, hold down the shift key and select the last one. Go back to your styles uh, panel and then click on the style and it applies that style to all of those objects. Okay. Now let's do the multiple fills. And to tell you the truth, they're not going to show up that good in this a text because I didn't pick a very wide font. So let's go ahead and recreate our star. Let's go ahead and click and drag a double star out. Okay. You can adjust it a little bit here. Make these a little fatter so you can see. And we'll add a couple more points like that. Okay, so we have our first fill. We can go ahead and just keep this first fill and we can use the style we created for these objects down here. Let's go back to our styles uh, menu over here and just select that and it will apply all of the multiple um, stroke values. We'll go back up to our appearance panel and let's give you some more room on that so you can see. Um, so we have our first fill here. We want to add another fill. Okay, so let's, first of all, in this bottom one, we wanted to create a gradient. So let's uh, click that and click our color selector there. Let's go to gradient. And on this, we want to uh, create the uh, purple and the pink. So we'll just go ahead and create the left side to be the purple and then apply that. And then this right side, we're gonna grab the uh, pink and apply that. So there's our gradient. Okay. 
Now we're going to go to our new fill that we just made. And we're going to do another gradient. This time we need the color uh, selector there. We need it to be in the center. So when you add one here, we're going to insert one. You'll It'll always add from the right. So select this left one and then insert and it adds it to the center. And then if you want to add another one, it would add it here. Okay. So we're going to change this color here to this yellow color. And then this one we're going to go ahead and select the pink again and apply it and we're going to go ahead and select purple and do that. What we're going to do now is we'll change the uh, opacity here on these end ones to be clear. Okay. And then we'll do this one as well. So it leaves just a little hint of the color close to the yellow in the center. And then if you drag these in a little bit, you begin to see. And because we left just a little bit of that color, it helps to really, I so you can see the yellow sitting on top of it. And that's what I li really like about these multiple fills. When you add a gradient on top of uh, colors, then you get to really see this faded effect, which sometimes gets lost in a single uh, gradient layer. Um, if you can stack them, it's really, really great. So, so that's how I did that. You can see, okay. And it, it goes the same in stacking in your appearance panel, the same, because we have this yellow gradient on top of the other gradient. So, you, and uh, zero opacity on the end, so you can see through it. Okay. So that's how you create multiple strokes and multiple fills in Affinity Designer 1.7. This appearance panel is a really powerful thing, especially to be able to use blend modes on different stroke values. Very, very powerful. Have some fun with it. Um, thank you so much for watching my videos. Click that subscribe button. I'm still working towards my first 500 subscribers, so click that subscribe button and go ahead and hit that notification bell. I got a lot of content coming out this year. And if you'll notice, I got Skillshare course and I got my website. I have some stuff out there as well. So feel free to visit those and learn some more about Affinity Designer. I love playing with this program and I do all my tutorials and everything on Affinity Designer right now. So thank you so much. Have a great day. Happy creating.